There are certain animals that just scream Maine, like moose or black bears. Puffins are another one of those species, and yet they remain a mystery to a lot of Mainers. David Guildford joins us now after meeting some truly dedicated researchers in the Gulf of Maine. Dedication is the right word. These yeah. birds are one of a kind, and the scientists might be as well. We had to take a boat miles out into the ocean to see the work that they do, and it is a trip for the senses. In the quiet town of Bremen, I hopped on a boat with Don Lyons, director of conservation science at the Audubon Seabird Institute. Seven miles out into the fog, a tiny island comes into view, as does a greeting party. Please keep your hand and feet inside the vehicle at all times. Arden Kelly is a kind soul for paddling me in, though she and her three Audubon research colleagues seem happy to have company on Eastern Egg Rock because the locals can be a bit much. As soon as you step foot on this island, one thing becomes blindingly apparent. It belongs to the bird. Oh man, <laughs> the noise is tough. Uh, the birds do not quiet at night. It is loud 24 seven. The ones making the racket are turns. Despite this work environment, birds are why the team of four is here, gladly signing up to live on this rock from May through mid-August to study a most peculiar looking Maine species, puffins. Don, Arden, and I sat in a blind and watched the spectacle. More than 400 puffins migrate here each spring to find lifelong mates and reproduce. They're expert swimmers, frantic flyers, and they're a serious tourist attraction. But this scene was almost lost forever. Puffins were absent from this island perhaps for as much as 100 years, from the late 1800s until 1973 when Audubon began a restoration program and brought the first puffling chicks, pufflings, down from Canada. Humans hunted puffins off this island. Now, under Project Puffin, these people protect and study a healthy colony. In fact, they seem to be one with this place. The team's presence keeps predators like eagles away, and some strange things happen here. This is a laughing gold chick. <laughs> Do you regularly just snatch birds off the ground? Yeah. There we go. All right. Wait a minute. How often does that happen? Oh, very often. And this turn chick seems to have befriended them. The researchers telling me they nursed it after its family abandoned it. Now it rarely leaves their camp while it matures. They're really buoyant. Back at work, to the left of our blind, I noticed research assistant Cameron Zoller sitting patiently in another. And then I saw she was holding a very long string. Oh, we got one. We got a puffin. I got it on camera. Oh, you got nice. it. Nice. Nice job. They catch <laughs> and carefully tag the birds so they and other agencies can keep tabs on the population. 365 weight. As they migrate to Maine in May and from here in August. They are also really dense. Like they feel like a little football. They also take some measurements and then it's time for an awkward goodbye. Since puffins are so dense, they can't really just take off from standing. They have to get some momentum. And since we have them in hand, we have to give him the momentum. So we usually go to the edge and we granny toss them. <laughs> Yay! Honestly, the best part of the job. I love it so much. Zoller then showed us another favorite pastime. He grew so much searching for puffin chicks. Oh, what a <laughs> you go down, follow the poop. That's, that's what we always go by. And then you go all the way in here. And that's where he lives. Oh. <laughs> the team has noticed earlier puffling birds as they adapt to climate change. There are challenges ahead but they believe this habitat is a success story worthy of optimism. With a little hard work and dedication uh, and a little elbow grease and a little love and 
maybe the not caring about bird poop so much uh, can really provide the results to show that uh, you know our dedication can make a difference in terms of conservation and that projects that take initiative like this one uh, can lead to beautiful things and lots of very happy plump babies. Life here is hard for bird and human alike. Ready? Oh. But these few dedicate themselves here to make us better stewards of Maine. Yeah, that's it, that's all. So in order to help fund this work, the Seabird Institute is running an Adopt a Puffin program. And we here at News Center decided to take part. <laughs> this is uh, News Center Maine's Puffin. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Its Christian name is EN78. Okay. Okay. But Lacks a certain poetry. But <laughs> yes. And because of that, we are taking some missions right now to help name this Puffin, give it a different name. You can hop onto our website and submit. We're hoping to choose one uh, around the time of the end of the Olympics. So get online and you might be the proud namer of a Puffin that lives on Eastern Egg Rock. They might have been in that piece. They're just hard to keep track of. Yeah, they might have been granny tossed, <laughs> as you said. <laughs> can, can even the researchers out there, can they point at a puffin and say, oh yeah, we know that one and it's different from that one. Do they recognize them individually? Not that I could tell. The bands really help. Yeah. yeah. They say they need to be field readable so that you can easily identify, but you saw those things They're were little, small. They yeah. need to do things like yeah. catch them in that box, pull them out, read the tag, see where maybe they came from, mm. see how healthy yeah. they are. Delightful. All right, so go to our website or app for more information on the naming contest. Awesome. Thanks, great, David. Great stuff, David. The cute little pufflings. Oh, <laughs> coming up.